Hello everyone, this is Suraj here. Welcome you all to my channel. Today, we will discuss about VPC endpoints. Before watching this video, I shall recommend you to watch the video on NAT Gateway, video number 20 in AWS playlist in this channel. Link for the video will be mentioned in the description. So let's start with VPC endpoints. So what is VPC endpoints? Using VPC endpoints, we can connect any AWS services using private network instead of public network. So when we were using NAT gateway, so that time what we were doing, we were trying to connect to any AWS services using public network through NAT gateway. But using VPC endpoints, we will connect to AWS services using a private network. What is the second point? Using VPC endpoints, we no longer need to set up internet gateway and net gateway to access AWS services over the public network. Third point is VPC endpoints are scaled horizontally and are managed by AWS. Fourth point is VPC endpoints are powered by AWS private link. See here, when the instance in private subnet tries to connect to any AWS services, using NAT gateway that time it needs to connect to the NAT gateway then the NAT gateway will connect to the internet gateway and through internet gateway the instance was able to connect to the AWS services right but with the help of VPC endpoints we no longer need the NAT gateway and internet gateway so that we can connect to the AWS services using a private network not a public network fine Two types of VPC endpoints are there. First one is interface endpoints. Second one is gateway endpoints. Let's discuss about interface endpoints first. It supports most of the AWS services. That means using internet endpoints, we can connect to most of the AWS services using private network. We can create interface endpoints for each subnet inside a VPC. That means for a particular subnet, we can create interface endpoint fine it creates an endpoint network interface in the subnet and assign it a private ip address from the range of subnet address range security group must be attached to the endpoint network interface it includes additional cost for hourly usage and data processing this is one vpc and within this vpc one private subnet is there within this private subnet one ec2 instance is trying to connect to Amazon SQS using interface endpoint. See, this interface endpoint is there within this private subnet and with this interface endpoint, one ENI is attached, right? This ENI will be assigned with one private IP address, fine? And the IP address range will be within the range of this private subnet, fine? And with the help of this ENI, the EC2 instance will connect to this Amazon SQS over the private network. It will not use public network. Fine. Now let's discuss about gateway endpoints. So what is gateway endpoints? Gateway endpoints provide reliable connectivity to Amazon S3 and DynamoDB without requiring an internet gateway and NAT gateway. So basically gateway endpoints are generally used for S3 and DynamoDB, not for other AWS services. It does not use Amazon private link, unlike interface endpoints. It provisions a gateway which is used as a target in the route table, but it does not use security group, unlike interface endpoints. Interface endpoints were using security groups, but gateway endpoints are not using security groups. There is no additional charges for gateway endpoints. This is our VPC and within this VPC one private subnet is there and if you have observed within this private subnet EC2 instance is there but the gateway endpoint is not inside the private subnet. It is outside this private subnet but inside the VPC, right? So when the EC2 instance will try to connect to Amazon S3 or Amazon DynamoDB using private network so that time it will connect to the gateway endpoint first and with the help of gateway endpoint it will be able to connect to amazon s3 and amazon dynamodb using a private network that's it for now today we'll see you in the next video if you really like this video kindly like share comment and subscribe bye bye